<laughs> Another woman comes forward who says that Mike Bickle groomed and sexually abused her beginning at age 15. International House of Prayer, KC, removes itself from financial accountability. And X is still blowing up with the narrative of IHOP KC and Mike Bickle allegations. Also, I offer some scriptural and pastoral support for all those who are affected by the controversy surrounding IHOP and Mike Bickle. All that and more on this episode of Churchpreneurs. Let's get into this. Thanks for tuning in to Church of Renewers today. My name is Richard Moore. In this podcast, I talk about everything that's moving me in relation to church and theology, hopefully to empower you in your ministry, your church, your theological understanding, and most importantly, your personal growth in Christ. Before we go any further, if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, the subscribe button, and hitting the bell for notifications, it helps YouTube get this content out to more people. Thanks so much. So today I'd like to cover this third woman comes forward who says Mike Bickle groomed and sexually abused her beginning at the age of 15. So let's jump over to here my desktop and we'll look at that report. The Roy's report covered this on February 10th, that's uh, Saturday morning by Rebecca Hopkins and Julie Roy's. Thank you all so much for covering this. Thank you Roy's report. Thank you Julie Roy's and Rebecca Hopkins if you see this appreciate your coverage. We need investigative reporters to cover this, especially from a Christian perspective. Thank you for your pursuit of the truth and for your pursuit of holiness, your pursuit of righteousness for the bride of Christ, for the church. Please go over there and read this. I will cover it here. Also, we need other journalists as well to cover this, not just Christian journalists, but we do appreciate Christian journalists covering it from a Christian perspective, seeking purity in the church. So thank you all so much. The title is exclusive. Third woman says Mike Bickle groomed and sexually abused her beginning at age 15. A third woman has come forward accusing International House of Prayer Kansas City founder Mike Bickle of grooming and sexually abusing her beginning when she was 15 and Bickle was a 20-year-old church intern. The woman, who wished to be identified as TH, spoke exclusively to the Roy's report and is the ex-wife of Bob Hartley. Hartley is a self-proclaimed prophet and alleged friend of Bickle's who was banned last month from IHOP KC due to allegations of sexual misconduct. TH said Bickle kissed her and fondled her breasts in the mid-1970s when Bickle was a youth group intern at Colonial Presbyterian Church in Kansas City, Missouri, and TH was a youth group student. TH described Bickle as her spiritual father and said she and Bickle dated in secret because her parents didn't approve of the relationship. TH added that Bickle's sister, Tracy Bickle, now pastor over restoration and recovery at IHOP Casey's Forerunner Church, was aware of the relationship and used to pass notes between TH and Mike Bickle. Though their dating relationship ended in 1976, TH said she and Bickle re-engaged in the 1980s and had an inappropriate emotional relationship then. This is when Bickle was married and planting Kansas City Fellowship, now Kairos Church, in Kansas City, Missouri. Here's a picture of Mike Bickle teaching at the International House of Prayer in Grandview, Missouri. I don't know if that's recent. It looks pretty old. Mike Bickle denied the allegations in an email to the Roy's report. None of this is true, absolutely false, he wrote. The Roy's report also reached out to Tracy Bickle for comment, but she did not respond. However, on October 27th, the day IHOP KC leaders announced vague allegations against Mike Bickle, Tracy Bickle sent TH a text thanking TH for her voice. This is what I do for a living for the last 30 years, Tracy Bickle wrote. 100% understand victims and stand with them and the pathology of ungodly men and women having hidden lives. TH is the third woman to come forward with a story of alleged sexual abuse involving Mike Bickle. The primary Jane Doe told her story of alleged abuse exclusively to the Roy's report in late November. She said Bickle used prophecy to abuse her from 1996 to 1999 beginning when she was 19 and Bickle was in his 40s and in the process of founding IHOP KC. Doe said the abuse included everything short of sexual intercourse. Then this week, 
A Michigan woman, Tammy Woods, came forward with her story of alleged abuse. She claimed Bickle sexually abused her beginning when she was 14, and Bickle was a 25-year-old pastor at a church in St. Louis. Woods said the abuse included kissing, fondling, and Bickle moving on top of her until he released. All the allegations came after an advocate group, AG, comprised of former top IHOP KC leaders, last October publicly accused Bickle of engaging in clergy sexual abuse with multiple women, spanning several decades. TH told the Roy's report that she gave the AG permission in October to use some of her story, but at the time didn't consider herself a victim. And this is a picture of Alan Hood speaking in the video on January 24th that they released those three, that three part video series. If you haven't seen that, you can go look at it. I haven't covered it in detail. I covered a few aspects of it. Um, you're welcome to look at that. In December, IHOP KC hired Rosalie McNamara of the Lathrop GPM to investigate the allegations. However, the main Jane Doe and the AG refused to participate in McNamara's investigation because they doubted its independence. In December, I have KC permanently separated from Mike Bickle due to his inappropriate behavior. Uh, and a few videos before that inappropriate behavior is, you know, farting in public or burping in public. That's inappropriate behavior. So I have KC has not named what Mike Bickle did. Inappropriate behavior is anything. I mean... <laughs> They have not said exactly what he did. Last week, IHOP KC released the results of McNamara's investigation, which found that Bickle, more likely than not, abused his power. How did he abuse his power? I mean, an abuse of power can be uh, smashing people with Bibles over the heads. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of making stuff up. But abuse of power is much different than sexual abuse. So are they admitting it? They have not quite really admitted it. TH said she's speaking out now because of Woods' story. The first alleging Bickle abused a minor sounded so similar to her own and caused her to see her relationship with Bickle in a new light. TH said Woods' account of how Bickle befriended Woods' parents gave Woods a Bible and pursued Woods despite her parents' objections sounded just like what Bickle had done with TH and her family. Reading Tammy's account, just really made me go back and see it so differently, just so differently. TH told the Roy's report, I've definitely been groomed, there's no doubt about it. An audacious misrepresentation of the truth. In addition to telling her story, TH also released a public statement on Thursday blasting McNamara's report last week as insufficient and woefully misleading. In her report, McNamara states it was her understanding that TH, known as the third Jane Doe did not want to be on any list of Bickle's alleged victims. McNamara further states that Doe's TH's ex-husband said his ex-wife did not want to be involved in an investigation and would have told him if there was a relationship or anything of that nature with Bickle. But in her statement, TH said she told McNamara she'd gladly share her story if the AG and the IHOP KC could agree on a third-party investigation. TH also confronted McNamara for including statements in her report about TH from TH's ex-husband, Bob Hartley. In no way do the words of my ex-husband, who himself was recently banned from the IHOP Casey premises over his own sexual misconduct allegations, reflect my experience, TH wrote. To seek out and give credence to his claims was extremely negligent and resulted in an audacious misrepresentation of the truth. TH also challenged McNamara's statement in her report that there is credible evidence supporting Bickle's claim that he didn't tell anyone that his wife was going to die and he could be with them. This is simply not true, TH wrote. As I testified to the advocacy group in October in 1983, Mike explicitly told me of a prophecy regarding the death of his wife, Diane. He believed Diane's death would happen in an earthquake in St. Louis, and the implications of sharing the prophecy with me was that her death would open up a path forward for him and I to pursue a romantic relationship together. TH ends her statement with a call for an investigation by a truly independent third party. The Roy's report reached out to McNamara for comment about TH's allegations, but did not get a response. Grooming of a 15-year-old. As Bickle did with Woods and her family, TH said Bickle would visit her home and chat with her and her mom. Bickle also became TH's spiritual mentor. 
He was my spiritual father, T.H. said. He was just the best guy ever. T.H. said her parents didn't approve of Bickle dating her, so the two dated in secret. The relationship became physical, which Bickle seemed to regret, T.H. said. There were a few times when he would fondle me and then he'd be really remorseful, like he was engaged in a battle with his desire and his godliness, she said. The two broke up in January 1976, T.H. said. Not long after, Bickle moved to St. Louis, where his abuse of Woods allegedly took place. T.H. finished high school, went to college, and then moved back to Kansas City. One day, she said Bickle called her out of the blue. He said, God just dropped your phone number into my mind, she said. It was a turning point in my life in that he got me reignited with falling after Jesus. It was kind of like this was part of my testimony that God had used Mike and he got me back on track. In 1993, when TH was in her early 20s, Bickle moved back to Kansas City to plant Kansas City Fellowship. By this time, he was married and had kids. TH said she heard that Bickle was planning a new church and didn't plan to attend. Then I was listening to Christian radio and I heard they were having a prayer meeting, TH said. So I showed up to one of their very first prayer meetings and then I just got swept away with all the momentum. She said Bickle immediately rekindled their emotional connection, even though he had a wife and kids. We would go on these long walks, fully visible to others, just talking and it was all God talk, she said. But there was that emotional connection. She said Bickle told her of a girl he knew from St. Louis who reminded him of T.H. Special, godly, hard after God, etc., T.H. said. I just never realized the extent of how special she was to him. Now I know he was telling me about Tammy. And here's a picture here. I want you to notice this. This is Mike Bickle, Alan Hood, Alan Hood of the Advocacy Group. And I believe that's Misty Edwards right there in the middle. She looks really young, but I think that's without dreadlocks. Misty Edwards has dreadlocks now, as, as far as I know. And so these, these guys, these advocates in this advocate group are insiders, not just insiders. I think Alan Hood, as far as I understand, was in on things from the beginning and has spent a significant amount of time there. I'm not exactly sure how long he was there. These guys who are coming and advocating for these women are not Johnny come lately. They're not, they don't have a, a, an ax to grind. They don't have a vendetta against Mike or anything like that. They are card carrying members of the movement as it were the 24 seven prayer movement. Now I think, and I hope, and I pray that they're actually coming to terms with that and realizing that this whole thing is a lie. 24 seven prayer movement is a construct that created by Mike Bickle and his prophetic lies. They are prophetic lies. Coming soon to one theater in Scranton, Pennsylvania. All the Kansas City prophets are, are hucksters and charlatans, every one of them. They're liars. They lied consistently and continually about their prophecies they had. They made stuff up and built this whole foundation on false prophecies. And they are false. 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 And false. They are false verifiably false. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. So I hope and pray that they're coming to their senses that not just this is inappropriate and, and, and beyond the pale of what a, a person ought to be doing and a clergy, but I hope and pray they're understanding that their foundations of the movement are false and that they can turn now and trust in the true Christ, go to a true church, be part of the true bride of Christ, the true church. I break that up in there to show you that they're insiders. The advocacy group are insiders. They're not outsiders like me. I'm a total outsider. I'm just <laughs> reporting on this from the outside. Look at in. I have been to prayer houses. People say, why don't you go to prayer house? I have been to prayer houses and everything I've witnessed in every single prayer house I have been to burn sessions. I've been to burn sessions. I've been to prayer houses. I've been to 24 seven prayer places. I've been to boiler rooms. I've not been to IHOP KC myself personally, but I've been enough to enough to know that they are part of that prayer movement and everything I've ever experienced at one of those places is aberrant, like totally sideways, not true Christianity. I say all that on the side to show you where I'm coming from. I'm not insider, but I have been to these places. I know about them pretty intricately. 
So I'm not a Johnny come lately and I have done my research. So here we go. Further on in the, t- in the article, one night TH and Bickle spent time together, but outside while Diane, and the boys were in St. Louis, they were sitting on a hill and Bickle said his back hurt. I knew he wanted me to massage his back, but I was like, I'm not going there. TH said, I'm not doing that. And so nothing happened there. But the next morning, Bickle told her he was going to call Diane and tell her they had spent time together alone. He said he had the phone in his hand, but then he decided, no, there was nothing wrong with it. She said, sometimes they'd go to restaurants or the movie theater with a group of people. I remember him kind of pushing someone out of the way in order to sit next to me at the movie, she said. She said nothing physical happened between them at the time. But then one day, she said Bickle told her of a prophecy. There was going to be an earthquake in St. Louis and that his wife, Diane, would be in St. Louis at the time of the earthquake and she would die, TH said. And because of that, there would be a way forward for us and our relationship. TH said the culture of prophecy surrounding Bickle was exciting. I was caught up in the prophetic and God speaking and all that stuff, she said. And and so there was a big group of young adults that were all in this together. And it was life-changing for all of us. Becoming a Jane Doe. During this time, TH said she met Bob Hartley, who was also involved in Kansas City Fellowship. She said Hartley told people that God told him he would marry TH. TH then believed God had told her she was going to marry Hartley. It was a really big deal because he was not someone I would naturally be attracted to, nor did our personalities mesh, she said. She said Bickle conducted the wedding ceremony. Hartley then became a youth pastor at Kansas City Fellowship, working under Bickle, who was still the pastor. Once the two were married, she said the emotional interactions between Bickle and her ended. Bickle and Hartley weren't exactly close friends at that time, more like two peacocks in the same pen, TH said. But over the years, Hartley has been a frequent guest at IHOP KC, and several pictures of him and Bickle are available on social media. Bickle previously told the Roy's report that he hasn't had much contact with Hartley for the past 15 years, except for seeing Hartley in the prayer room every couple months. But Hartley's son, Jedediah Hartley, told the Roy's report recently that his dad said he'd been talking to Bickle. Also, Jedediah Hartley showed the Roy's report a text from his dad stating that Bickle's son, Luke Bickle, was living with him. The fact that T.H. had dated Bickle in high school was common knowledge, said Michael Sullivan, a former pastor at Kansas City Fellowship who served with the Bickles and the Hartleys. In 2015, the Hartleys' marriage ended in divorce due to Bob's pornography use, lying, and misuse of prophecies in their family, T.H. said. Sullivan told the Roy's report that in 2015, T.H., told him about Bickle's prophecy about Diane dying someday and Bickle marrying T.H. Then in 2023, the primary Jane Doe met with Sullivan, his wife and former IHOP KC leaders, Dwayne and Jennifer Roberts, and said Bickle had used the same prophecy to abuse her. This jogged Sullivan's memory about Bickle's prophecy to T.H., so he told the group right then. The AG collected similar stories they'd heard around the theme of this prophecy. AG member Dwayne Roberts previously told the Roy's report Roberts compiled the information in a working document they showed to an IHOP KC leader in October. TH said that the past few months have been eye-opening for her, especially this last week. She said before reading Woods' story, she viewed her relationship with Mike Bickle as a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. Now she realizes Bickle groomed, manipulated, and abused her. He was such a master manipulator, T.H. said. When this started coming up, it was just so hard to disconnect myself from thinking, he's a good guy. He's, a, he's just a good guy. He's so good at being a good guy, but he was so evil. She told the Roy's report that she struggled to see herself as a Jane Doe, but today she says she sees it differently. I would say I'm one of them. I hop Casey apologizes. IHOP Casey's handling of the allegations against its founder have been widely criticized since the scandal broke more than three months ago. Last night, IHOP KC issued a formal apology on X, admitting some failures and expressing remorse. Words cannot express the anger, shock, heartbreak, and sadness we have experienced as we have learned of allegations and testimonies of sexual abuse and manipulation concerning Mike Bickle, founder of IHOP KC, the IHOP KC leadership team stated. We believe that Mike Bickle sexually abused and manipulated Jane Doe and Tammy Woods, who was a minor at the time. 
His predatory and abusive actions are sick and violate the word of God and the marriage covenant and holiness. We condemn them in their entirety. Well, it's about time. I mean, literally, we all knew this was happening. We all saw this. I'm sorry, but like, wow, IHOP KC, y'all are the late, the, the last ones to the party. If you would have done this three months ago or when you removed, formally separated yourselves and removed Mike Bickle from formal engagement with IOPKC, you would have done yourself a huge favor. Like by saying, putting this statement out three months ago, or at least when you separated from Mike Bickle, you said you separated from him, Eric Voles, I believe said, for inappropriate behavior. What is inappropriate? Just name it. Why? Why? Everybody knew what was happening. Why couldn't you just name it and have such a strong stance as this? You have uh, equivocated. You have hemmed and hawed as long as you possibly could until you could not any longer. And finally, it was obvious that he was abusing underage 14 and 15 year old girls. Yeah. So interesting. A 19, him being 47 and, and, and the first Jane Doe being 19 wasn't a bridge too far, but pedophilia is a bridge too far for you guys. Why couldn't you have done this before? We know what's happening. At least pedophilia is a bridge too far for IHOP KC and its leadership. So let's keep going. IHOP Casey also apologized for two messages Bickle gave to the 24-7 prayer ministry in October, which it said were manipulative attempts to construct a narrative of innocence concerning himself. In those messages, Bickle used the metaphor of a black horse to describe an attack that would come against him. One of those messages remained posted to YouTube at the time of publishing. So this is a few days ago, but I want to point something out, and maybe if the Roy's report would clarify this, it would uh, help a little bit. So the message that they're talking about is not a message posted by so here they give a link to it and i believe ihop kc has officially taken it down from their website this is this one is not posted by ihop kc this is sermonindex.net and so just for clarity roy's report so that it doesn't look like ihop that we don't want to unduly press ihop kc for something that they have not done this is not posted on their youtube anymore this is on sermonindex.com.net. Sorry, sermonindex.net. So Sermon Index indexes sermons and probably just grab this some way and somehow. I don't know why or how or what that's about, but I this is not on IHOP Casey's official. And I covered that actually in my original, one of my original two or three videos, I believe. I don't know exactly which one anymore, but I looked at that and they took it down pretty quickly because they realized that this is a message from a cult leader. That's what happened, actually. The advocate group, some of the gentlemen in, advo- in the advocate group, I'm not exactly sure who who said that anymore. Let's see. Um, it it might have been Alan Hood. Alan Hood emailed Mike Bickle and said, hey, you look like a cult leader. And he, he did. So the Black Horse prophecy was reiterated in that message from Mike Bickle, but it's not up. So let's not give IHOP KC pressure where there's not but it's not true accurate. So maybe Roy's report, if you could adjust this or print up uh, an addition or not a retraction, it's not a retraction because it's the main message is up at the time of publishing or remain posted on YouTube, but it's posted by someone else. So just to be clear and to be, to, to make sure that I hop Casey's not getting pressure for something that they have not done. They've probably taken it down. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think they have. They've taken it from their website because when I looked at it, it was on Mike Bickle's website still and pl- other places. Maybe instead of giving the implication that IHOP Casey still has it up, you could say something to the effect of one of those messages can still be seen or one of those messages is here to be seen. Something to that effect. This gives the impression that IHOP Casey is still one of those messages remained up at the time of publishing. It gives the impression that IHOP Casey is still promoting this are still publishing this work, this terrible sermon by Mike Bickle, which I don't think they're doing anymore. IHOP Casey also apologized for a staff meeting on October 27th in which IHOP Casey leaders announced the allegations against Bickle. The announcement did not disclose the nature of the allegations or any details prompting former IHOP Casey senior leader Dean Briggs to publicly object, calling the announcement righteous BS. 
that was pretty public. Then the second thing that was also that I have Casey should absolutely apologize for, I think it was talked about in Heaven Bent podcast. They played a section from IHOP U and whoever the leader was there, I forget his name. He talked about how you basically as students don't talk to your parents about this, which is really terrible. I mean, you think about it. There are allegations that the founder of the ministry that your child is at is sexually abusing people and girls in that are that age. And they say, don't tell your parents. <sighs> Boy. Wow. I mean, I've said it and I'm going to keep saying it. There is so much damning evidence that these guys are covering stuff up and going to continue to abuse you. If you have children, especially girls at IHOP U, you should get them out now. Literally go pick them up in IHOP, go to Kansas City, go get them and take them home. I don't know what else to tell you. I have a 14-year-old, I have a 15-year-old, and it was hard enough for me to get through that other article last week. Go get them. Go pick them up, take them home, and be a regular Christian. And I, I'll say it again. If you see the, the nearest exit, if you're sitting in the worship house right now and you see the nearest exit, run, do not walk, you may not have another chance to get out of there. Do you think that the Jonestown people had chances to get away? Sure they did. Sure they did. Did they have a chance to not drink the Kool-Aid at the last second? Sure they did. But you got to do it. You got to walk away. You got to run. You got to get out. So this is going to be another tough episode here. Sorry for that. But I don't know what else. Literally don't know what else to say. The rabbit hole has gone so deep. I cannot imagine that that anybody's still left there. So I hop Casey's apologize for that. I appreciate that. But they didn't apologize, as far as I'm understand, for the IHOP U statement that basically don't tell your parents about this, about this story. Don't talk. Don't bring it up. That that's the first the to, the first thing that it should have done was say every single student, please tell your parents what's happening, and we are dealing with it. We're handling it. But they didn't do that. They did the opposite. It's hard to believe. So. IHOP Casey said the meeting lacked a necess necessary disclosure and candor to meet the gravity of the situation. For this, we also apologize. They also apologized for the IHOP U president, whoever he was, telling them, the students, not to talk to their parents about these issues. The leaders thanked the IHOP Casey community for its patience and perseverance in spite of our shortcomings and commitment to do better. Okay, that's that article. That is the article from Roy's report. Exclusive third woman says Mike Bickle groomed and sexually abused her beginning at age 15. All right, so then there's also this at the Roy's report. The International House of Prayer resigns from Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. My organization, my mission agency is part of the ECFA. You have to report your books every year so that you stay financially accountable to somebody. And so why would IHOP K Casey get out of it just doesn't make any sense unless you got something to hide. There's only one reason you would get out of that board unless you have something to hide. And so I haven't read the article. I don't need to read the article. There's no reason for them to get out of it except for if you have something to hide and you don't want to be accountable anymore. So switching over to Twitter, I've been interacting with this uh, woman, got kids, no peace. She's been very encouraging and very interesting uh, discussions back and forth. She posted this, which is a discussion or a heartfelt cry to all the Jane Doe's out there. This is very helpful, and I'm going to read that in a moment. I hope Casey is entering a season of mourning and repentance. And she asked the question, but so they're not going to do a live stream. So the live streams are canceled for now because they're entering a season of mourning and repentance. Why are they canceling now? Why are they closing the live stream off? If they're repenting and calling out to God, what a strange ethos, she says. Public and pious about prayer, yet going total dark in matters of church discipline and repentance. Wonder that what scripture says about these things. I said, well, there's a few things I can think about. Immediately, the first one that comes to mind for me is, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. James 5, 16. Another one that comes to mind as well is, whoever conceals his transgression will not prosper, 
but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Proverbs 28, 13. So don't conceal anything, which is what it seems like they're doing. If we confess or admit publicly our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. So we ought to confess. And again, here's the post she was talking about. The Global Prayer Room will continue 24-7, but in light of this season of mourning and repentance, we will not be live streaming all sets, joining the prayer room, blah, blah, blah. So they're not streaming that. I don't know why, but then someone had a bead on this upcoming article, the article by Julie Royce. So someone had uh, some inside information on that. Wait until you see the next article, they said. So that was forthcoming, and it did come out on Saturday. So Will Cabrera has been posting quite a bit as well. He says, will anyone in leadership at IHOP Casey have the courage to step out of the shadows and take a stand, step out of the PR shield and say they are tired of partnering with lies? No more spokes, spokesman, no more show trial, just the fear of the living God. Wow. Great question. And then I posted, and I will stick to this. If you're still at IHOP Casey, I'm going to keep saying it till they close the doors. Run. Do not walk to the nearest exits. If you're sitting in an in the IHOP prayer room right now and you look around, find the closest exit and run. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Get out. I, I don't know what else to tell you. If you have a child at IHOP, you, especially a girl, go get them. Take them home with you before they get abused. I mean, that, there's obvious abuses happening here. Heaven Bent Podcast had already exposed some of those abuses, not just Mike Bickle. I mean, Bickle is the tip of the iceberg, honestly. And so they exposed tons of stuff in that series they had been doing before all this broke. So go get your children. Go get your children and close the doors. They should close the doors. I hope KC should close down. Jessica Deirdrick has been posting a lot as well. And she has posted this about lives being ripped apart by every abuse of every kind. So Go get your kids, run to the nearest exit. And then Will Cabrera posted that uh, One Thing conference where Lou Engel, Mike Bickle what, were there. And, and Mike Bickle got, gets up after Lou confesses his long-term pornographic use. And there, Mike Bickle minimizes the entire thing. So I thought the same thing years ago. I thought, wait a minute, that does not sound like, let's pray for this guy, of course, for sure. But he minimized it, basically. He minimized his long-term long porn addiction. So someone posted, Got Kids No Peace posted again about the uh, Rick Joyner and him saying, uh, uh, Mr. Nothing Burger. So and Rick Joyner said that these accusations are a big nothing burger. And she questioned that. And I said, wait a minute, in a tongue-in-cheek. He's an apostle. How dare you touch the Lord's anointed? And it's, it's tongue in cheek. So how dare, I mean, he's an apostle. Rick Joyner is one of the Kansas City prophets, Jim Gall, James Gall, Bob Jones, Mike Bickle, and others. And so he became an apostle in the movement. So he's an apostle. How dare you touch the Lord's anointed? Whew, I don't, I don't want to be standing next to you while touching the Lord's anointed. Sense my tongue in cheek. Thanks for sharing this. She shared this right here, and I'll, I'll go that into that in a minute. And then encourage me to keep going. Keep putting these videos out. I'll keep putting them out. Good, man. Trying to follow the information. Trying to follow, give a biblical response. Give a, a pastoral response as well. I want to give a pastoral response, so stick around to the end, please. I want to give a pastoral and biblical and scriptural response to hopefully to encourage you. I did get a lot of heat. I got a lot of heat. People started to hate in the beginning, but people are starting to come around. And hopefully, eventually, people abandon the NAR for the true faith that's once and for all handed down to the saints. So if you're part of the NAR, come out. Come out and be holy. Come out and be separate. Abandon it and turn to the true faith once and for all handed down to the saints. Funny enough, now people actually who were really hateful at the beginning and giving me lots of grief are coming around and actually saying I was right. Someone actually posted, if you, if the truth comes out, will you, will you post that too? And I said, sure, absolutely. I mean, if this, if, if Mike Bigel's not guilty and it all comes out and I'll cover it all, I'll cover every single thing. Send me something. If you know something's coming up, post stuff, I'll cover it all. But it didn't turn out that way. And so he came back and wrote, you're right. This guy's really a, an evil guy and I hop doors should close down. That's someone in the prayer movement, in the movement of the NAR, defending the NAR theology, said this that, that the IHOP should shut down. And I agree. 
So here's this one that someone posted. I believe it was Got Kids No Peace posted this wonderful statement by Susan Woods Claridge. I want to read this to you and give you some comfort and support as well. If those of you who maybe have suffered and struggled and, and, and or experienced some kind of sexual abuse or trauma like this, then this is really a helpful statement. So I think Claridge was mentioned and has some relation with uh, Tammy Woods. I'm not exactly sure. So, but it's a public s statement she made on her Facebook. So she said this, if I can speak to the Jane Doe's, you better than anyone know the damage spiritual grooming, whether it includes sexual abuse or not, does to a person. But can you see the collateral damage it does to those around you? Your voice proclaiming truth doesn't just ignite a healing process in yourself, but it sparks restoration in those who you love. Those who can see a change in you and either silently watched you slip away or fought to stay in your life. Mike gave you a career, helped you live your dream, promoted your ministry, supported you through difficult times, prayed with you, and made you believe he was the godliest man you knew. He shared emotional weakness with you so that you would see him as a heartfelt, repentant, and chasing after the Lord. It was not real. He did these things to solidify your silence, your loyalty, and your love. Link your security to him, and it becomes harder for you to speak out or walk away. You may have even built your spiritual identity with Bickle interwoven into the very fabric of who you have become and how you see yourself in the Lord. And now it feels impossible to separate the two. It's like taking a knife and slicing your soul to shreds. You're scared. You're shaky. You're spiraling into self-destructive thoughts. That's right where he, Bickle, I think she means, wants you to be. And so that he can make it better, tell you what to say, and show you what to do. I believe this is the time when the rubber meets the road regarding your faith. Ask yourself the hard questions. Do I believe in God's strength and love for me more than I believe in Mike's? Which is more important in my life, clinging to something that I know deep down in my soul is deception, or letting go and trusting that God knows me better than anyone, better than Mike, and God will not let me fall? Ask yourself, do you trust God's plan for your life, or do you trust Mike's pseudo-prophetic narrative of your life? There's nothing easy about your position. It hurts. And I say the same thing. I agree with this. You're, you fear that verbally pronouncing the betrayal will shatter you. I challenge you to trust God to restore you. Take that leap of faith. Step from out from Mike's control to Jesus' mercy, compassion, and strength. You, with your voice, hold the power to start a healing movement unlike any we've seen before. God brings a beauty out of the darkest areas of your life. Let go of Mike. Grip onto God with both hands and let him show you the beautiful things he has in store for you. Tell your story. Begin healing. Let us wrap our arms around you in support and love. You are not alone in this. Unravel the cord of manipulation he has wrapped around your throat and raise your voice. I agree. Hear, hear. Thank you for that statement. And please look to the Lord. I appreciate that. That is a wonderful soft landing pad for people who have struggled, who have suffered. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you for that post. That is a wonderful post. Susan Woods Claridge, appreciate that. Keep speaking those wonderful truths into people's lives so that we can, we can help these all who have suffered. So here, let's move on to a few more things. Here we go. Uh, Got Kids No Peace asked, uh, I'm not saying this is an excuse because many on X are proof it isn't, but was Mike Bickle maybe a victim of predation in his youth? He really couldn't stop himself from going after girls. So that's sort of a thought out there. And I want to not put any excuse for his behavior, his predatory behavior. There is no excuse for any abuse, abuses behavior, but I do understand that a percentage of those who've been abused become abusers. The NIH says men who have been abused become predators more often. Here's an empirical study which shows some results. So that's an interesting study. So their conclusions were the data support the notion of a victim to victimizer cycle in a minority of male perpetrators, but not among female victims studied. Sexual abuse by a female in childhood may be a risk factor for cycle of abuse in males. So the concept that the idea that perpetrators or uh, abused become abusers is, a, there's a little bit of truth to it. And it's more prominent maybe in males than in, than in females. So 
Just want to put that out there. Here's one post I wanted to reiterate again. Mike Bickle gave a prophetic word to C. Peter Wagner to install him into his office of apostle in 1999. Um, Wagner was became a card-carrying member and apostle in the movement in 1999 when he left Fuller Theological Seminary and went to Wagner Leadership, started at Wagner Leadership Institute until 2016 when he passed away. He was a NAR proponent and propagated the movement. And Mike Bickle prophesied over him here in his book, Apostles and Prophets, Wagner wrote about Mike Bickle's prophecy over him, putting him into his apostolic office. He says it very clearly in his governmental office, his fathering office, et cetera, et cetera. And Baugh's Law here says it as well. It's time. It's time to permanently close the doors at IHOP KC. And I'm in agreement. And I know some people didn't appreciate that, but it's there's so much going on. There's so much mistreatment and abuses that are chronicled throughout from the beginning, let's say from from the most recent beginnings from Heaven Bent Podcast until now. It's just the litany. It's just one after the other. Jeannie Briggs, Will, Will Cabrera reposted Jeannie Briggs' uh, statement. Instead, let there be a flood of justice, an endless procession of righteous living. That is from Amos 521. I hate all your show and pretense, the hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assemblies. Away with your noisy hymns of praise. I will not listen to the music of your harps. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice, an endless river of righteous living. So the harp and bowl, the whole idea, the harp and bowl, keeping that fire lit, you can't, it's not pleasing to the Lord if you don't seek justice and righteousness. Preston as well posted, I have come to the conclusion that IHOP Casey must be shut down. I've actually been against this, but seeing that the majority of Mike Bickle's supernatural experiences were likely false or greatly exaggerated, it must close. Good thought, good idea. Mike Bickle's prophecies, his prophetic history is a lie, probably mostly from start to finish. If not lies, they're greatly exaggerated and it should close. So I'm with it. This is very interesting, posted by Austin Roberts. He just keeps posting. Good for him. Keep going, man. And it's a sort of an observation by someone named Corey P. Stark, I guess is his full name. He posted something here that bouncers and patsies. So Mike Bickle had apparently a list of uh, people that he would kind of were called his bouncers. Meredith Stark and Corey Stark posted this and a, and a history of how that would work. It's very, very sophisticated. That's a very interesting post. And I just basically said, his pretty sophisticated manipulation and mind control, basically conditioning people not to cross or question Mike ever. This is not how pastors act, and neither do they abuse 14 and 15-year-olds sexually. So this is not how a pastor should act. Just for you who are in, trying to get in a soft landing into Christianity, like it's really crazy. This is not how pastors act. They're caring and compassionate merciful and gracious and if you have experienced mike in this way and you have this is the, your only experience in a pastoral world this is not how pastors act so when you go to another church and hopefully you can find your way to another church know that you should be looking for a compassionate man who smiles at you and loves you and doesn't try to control you and manipulate you and mind control you with patsies and bouncers so here this is i, I think I, I think i'll play this here real quick see if this works this is the closest thing I could find to a cinder block. But this is the closest picture that I can I'll hold it up here. I'll hold it for a minute. There you go. It's just a big, ugly, dirty rock. Right now, I feel like we're invited to digest this. That's how I feel. With the pain in my own family, with the pain that we're walking through as a ministry, it's start digesting this. It's like, how do you start? How do you digest a cinder block? How do you metabolize it? This is the closest thing I could find to a cinder block. I don't even know where to begin with that. 
Um, I, I just, I just said, if you're still at IHOP KC, you need to flee. These people are not capable of pastoring you through such a crisis. Get out while you can. And they themselves should probably just get out of ministry and just go do a regular job. That is not pastoral. Whatever that was is not pastoral care. I, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what he's getting at. What is he, what does he even mean as cinder block? I, wh what? I don't even, I, I'm really, really stupefied. I'm dumbfounded at read scripture, pray, cry, trying to be cute and trying to be, to, 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 to bring cute illustrations is not helping people. I don't understand. Like these people have, they're, they're not capable of pastoring you. And so I would just run, like run for us, run. Uh, there he goes. Get out, man. I, I'm not trying to be silly or cute or anything. They don't know how to be pastors. So, wow. Um, that's, yeah. Then this one's hilarious. This is so funny. So, of course, you might have probably found out the Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. I think this is the third time in five years. Back to back. This is funny. Bob Jones says, this is the last one. So, so there was this scene in the Super Bowl where Travis Kelsey was screaming at his coach. He took him out for a play and he didn't want to come out. He thought he could have really helped. The play didn't go so well or something. And he thought he could have really done something to, to change something different happening in that play. But how many, super, so he's screaming at his coach. And so <laughs> this is the meme that says, how many Super Bowls do we have to win before the end time revival starts? So like, how many Super Bowls do we have to win? <laughs> One more, two more, two, you know, it is funny because um, Bob Jones prophesied that when the Kansas City Chiefs, who were terrible at the time, they've been terrible for a long time and then finally got really good in these last five, six years. So it was, no one was really thinking like, oh, this will, will they win the Super Bowl? Then, hey, it'll be uh, worldwide global revival. And Bob Jones said it would be global, global revival. And so here I said, this is funny. Bob Jones says, this is the one, man. Ask Mike Bickle. He'll vouch for old Bob Jones. So that was really, I thought that was really cute. That's funny. Uh, Travis Kelsey's screaming at his coach. What? How many more <laughs> Super Bowls do we have to win? I'm tired, man. He's about to go into retirement. I'm tired. I don't. I don't <laughs> so I thought that was cute. That was good. So this is very interesting. Heaven Bent Podcast has posted this. Uh, given IHOP Casey's reluctance, reluctance to take meaningful action, I have decided to leverage my legal expertise to provide a platform for survivors to share their stories and seek redress. We aim to amplify the voices of victims, parents, witnesses, and whistleblowers, fostering solidarity. This is Missouri prosecutor Caleb J. Aponte. I believe he is working in uh, concert with Boz Chivijan, who Boz is now overwhelmed. He, I think he can represent any more people. And he has also posted his analysis of major flaws of the IHOP KC McNamara report and proposed actions. I have not read that. I think you ought to go read that for yourself. I can imagine what he, so here, here I'll just get the headlines, minimizing, minimizing Mike Bickle's wrongdoings. That was part of the McNamara report. He thinks that's a major flaw. And then neglected undiscovered victims i guess he takes exception to the mcnamara report i can imagine this is uh by paul kane's flask he said what what they could have said in light of recent revelations it is our somber conclusion that mike is an unrepentant sinner and the very foundation of this house was built with manipulations not true prophecy our only way forward is Reformation back to the true gospel once and for all delivered to the saints. We have a lot of work to do to reform our theology and our practices to conform to the will of God as revealed in the scripture and not delivered from the likes of Mike Bickle, Paul Kane, and Bob Jones. What did they say? Everyone has to eat a rock. That's good. So I gave a Morgan Freeman clap. Yeah, man. That's a really great statement. If they had said that, I would have been like, wow, okay but they didn't. So as we close today, I said, I really wanted to try to give you some, offer you some scriptural support, pastoral support and a soft landing to many of you who've been personally abused in some way, either by IHOP KC or Mike Bickle himself, or any of those who have been sexually abused in some way. This is devastating news. This hits home personally to you very, very deeply. I hope those statements earlier that I read can give you some comfort to start looking away from your abusers and looking to Christ. And I also want to, to put my hat in the ring, as it were, and offer you 
some pastoral safe landing area. And, and, and I find that mostly in the scriptures. Now we want to deal with psychologically, we want to deal with emotionally, we want to deal with spiritually. And I find that when you deal with the spiritual issue of the thing, then those other things can come along with it really easily right behind it. So I want to look at three scriptures in our closing today. Second Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. You may be familiar with it. Here it is right here. I got it in big letters. It says here, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. This is a great passage to read. You can keep reading and, and go into and look into that yourself. 2 Corinthians 1, starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God of Lord and Father of Lord Jesus Christ, the God of all comfort. He is the God of all comfort. He comforts you in your affliction, not just to keep it to yourself. I hope and pray that you can reach out and find him there comforting you in your affliction. But he doesn't just leave you there. He comforts you in your affliction as well so that you may be able to comfort those who are also in affliction. I pray that if you have been a, been a victim of some kind of abuse, whether it's through the IHOP KC or any, even Mike Bickle, that you would be able to receive the comfort, first of all, from God so that you can also comfort others in their affliction. Those of you who've gone through something like this have a special affinity, a special ability to comfort those who have also gone through it. You have that common experience, and I pray uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ would give you that comfort so that you can as well give comfort to those around you. And then verse 5, he says, For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. So sharing the, the sufferings of Christ gives us also the ability to be comforters. So those of you who have been through it, have gone through suffering, have gone through affliction, you're able to identify with the sufferings of Jesus Christ and comfort people out of that suffering. So let's move on. I have a couple more here, and this is 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. Here's what it says. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away. Maybe in these times you felt like you are wasting away, like your energy is sapped and drained from this entire thing. You're, you, you, you feel that, that life force, sorry, that's sucking you. It's sucking you dry, this whole thing. Maybe you feel wasting away. Our inner self is being, however, renewed day by day. If you are a Christian, if the Holy Spirit lives in you and he has sealed you to the day of redemption, then you are being renewed by him day by day. And it says in verse 17, this wonderful, wonderful verse, for this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are, un that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen, this pain, this tragedy, this abuse, this victimization that you've gone through, those things that are seen are transient. Those things will pass away. That's the great hope. It's not an, a, a, a life sentence, as it were. It's not an eternal punishment for you. It is transient. It will go away. But the things that are unseen are eternal. These things, God's preparing for you a, a glory beyond all comparison. Those things are unseen. You don't realize them yet until you enter into the glory of Christ. So, first of all, I want you to notice this moment, this affliction, for this light and momentary affliction. First of all, your affliction is light. It's easy in comparison to others' affliction or to some affliction that, that would be way worse. And it's momentary. It's a light affliction and it's a momentary affliction. It will only pass away, this affliction. And that affliction is preparing for you a weight of glory beyond all comparison. That may be hard to hear in the moment. You are suffering your outer self is, is wasting away, but just know your inner self, the, the, the 
part that is controlled by the Holy Spirit is being renewed day by day. And your light and momentary affliction is producing a weight of glory. So then let's move on to the last one here. This is Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, and it's very, very encouraging. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, those people who've gone before us, those saints of old, the saints in the church, the saints of old, those, all those people who have had wonderful testimonies, because we're surrounded by them, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. How do we do this race, this hardship that you're going through? Looking to Jesus or fixing your eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of God. If you look to Jesus Christ, he will help. He is the founder and perfecter of our faith. He is sitting in heaven. Actually, it says to make intercession for you. He is interceding for you right now at the throne of God. So cry out to him. Look to him. Place your faith in him. Let go of your abuser. Let go of your manipulator. Let go of your the organization that has manipulated you and cling to Jesus the author and perfecter of your faith. They don't choose and they don't have control over your narrative. The Lord Jesus Christ does. Look to him, seek him, and you will find him. Thank you all for sticking to the end here. This is what I wanted to say to you all. I wanted to really just give everyone an opportunity to see the most recent news, to deal with it, to have a safe landing pad, and to, I wanted to give you scripture on the back end to comfort you because he is the God of all comfort. Look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And this is the gospel here. Who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross for you and for me. He despised the shame of it because God had given him the command to go to the cross. Jesus said it in John 17, I believe it is. He said, God has given me this command. I give my life up freely and I take it back on my own accord. This command I received from my father, the command to go to the cross was received by his father for you and for me. And once he did that, once he went to the cross and was raised on the third day, victoriously over death, he is seated at the right hand of God on the throne. And from there, he makes intercession for you and for me. From there, he rules and reigns. From there, he is the sovereign king who will return for you and for me, his bride. That'll do it for this episode of Churchpreneur's Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I hope it was an encouragement and blessing to you. I hope those scriptures at the end were a safe landing pad, an encouragement for you to fix your eyes on Jesus. So until next time, God bless you and take care.